My 51-year-old mother cheated on my 58-year-old father. I doubt it, but I don't know if that was the first time. However, approximately nine months prior, my younger sister, a 23-year-old woman and I, caught her in the act in our parents' bed after we mismatched our dates and showed up for an alleged family get-together on the wrong weekend. I'm not sure how much of the specifics matter here, so I won't go into it, but how we discovered them most likely made me even more enraged and unforgiving of her. She claimed it was an isolated incident and Dad accepted her word for it, despite the fact that it broke his heart and he hasn't been the same since. But since then, he's shed a lot of weight. My other siblings, who are men 33 and 31 and females 31 and 23, as well as a few other family members who learned about it, were the only ones who didn't believe her. After a few months, they expected things to return to normal since they believed that if he had forgiven her, that was sufficient for them. But I refused to forgive her, telling her that night that she was dead to me and would never again be a part of my life or the life of my three-month-old daughter. When I was going to announce the news at that event, I was pregnant. I remained true to my word and didn't see or speak with her at all during the pregnancy. She was furious with me, accusing me of being cold-blooded, selfish, and onajo for denying her her first grandchild. Not only did she think I was at fault, but Dad and the rest of the family also seemed to believe this, and they avoided communicating with me. I feel like they're trying to get me to talk to her more, but my sister told me not to because they'll think I'm a big a-hole and won't want to interact with me. My significant other, one cousin and me are the only people on my side. Not only will what I saw haunt me for the rest of my life, but I also can't forgive her for what Dad has turned into. He often seems on the edge of tears when I inquire how he is. I have never seen him so hopeless and depressed. He sobbed in the nursery as I helped him get ready for my daughter the final time we saw each other, which was about a month before I gave birth. I was even angrier at my mother. To be honest, I feel like throwing up when I think about her in my life. Since my daughter was born, no one in my family has ever met her. Not one has ever contacted, inquired, or taken any other action. In a desperate attempt, my significant other tried to contact my family chat group with a picture of me and my newborn, but nobody answered. This is turning into a fight between mum and me, and it seems like she is winning. I have an issue since I adore my family so much. Our bond has always been so strong. They are depressed and refusing to communicate as long as I keep my mother out of my life. But I wouldn't mind if they had a relationship with both me and my mother. I miss them all, but especially Dad, who I think needs me now more than he has in the past. I can't seem to get over the animosity, even though I'm lost and sick of sobbing myself to sleep every night. How am I able to help edit? I appreciate all of the chat assistance in this site very much. However, a lot of people are suggesting that I'm being overly dramatic, that infidelity isn't all that horrible, and that it's absurd of me to be traumatized. I apologize to everyone who was offended. I'm not passing judgment on anyone who cheat. Of sure, a lot of people may leave an affair behind and return to their partnership. I'm merely sharing my personal story. I will not divulge the intimate information online or in private. It's not the point, and I'll let your imagination and my nightmares handle it. But I will tell you what happened after that. As previously said, my younger sister and I went on separate dates to my parents' at house. When we heard a disturbance at mom's voice, we assumed she had fallen or suffered an injury. So, terrified, we fled upstairs. However, they noticed us. It's not what you think, it's not what you think, the typical mother sobbed as she put on her clothes. My sister is crying and screaming, and the guy rushed to the bathroom. I wonder whether they had an arrangement because I asked mom, is daddy on it? Does he know? The guy then walks out while grinning and smoking while perched on my dad's bathrobe. I started screaming, what's going on? Does daddy know? While my sister became upset. I pulled out my phone to call the attorney so I could leave the area. But my mother grabbed me, knocked the phone out of my hand and pleaded with me to stop. Then with a laugh, the dude went to the door, locked it, and stood there blocking it. Telling mom to let us go, I turned to face her. She walked over to me and gave me two cheek slaps while yelling at me to stop. Sister had called dad and started crying, pleading with him to come and she was yelling, leave her alone, she's pregnant, mom. The guy added, dad is coming. And with that, he started removing his robe and getting dressed in front of us. That's what happened. 
I grabbed my sister, dashed outside, and waited for dad in the car. Before you read the update, here is the best suggestion to start with, congrats. Second, sweetheart, put your family first. You don't need this BS in your life right now. You have a new baby. They don't love or respect you, but you love and respect them. It is not good for your health. Don't try to make an attempt if they don't want you because you didn't do anything wrong. When they realize you lost up on them, I believe they might even try to make a comeback in your life before exerting futile effort. I'm grateful. I'm very sorry that you're being punished in this way by your family at a time when you should be enjoying the joy of sharing your baby with them. Seek therapy, even if it's just to process what you witnessed that day. You're aware that your mother has cheated in the past and most likely continues to do so. However, they've all chosen to ignore it, and in some way, they've projected their ire at your mother's treachery onto your response. Well done trick. Counseling at this time. Edit. In order to give OP peace of mind and the knowledge that she is not a part of the nuclear reaction within the family, I am in favor of counseling. She is deserving of giving up the irritation that is giving her tension and restless nights. To be very honest, I had never considered counseling. Perhaps I should try it. I think this is the most profound post I have ever read on the sub. It's very aggravating because after having done nothing wrong, you're being treated like the worst person alive. To be honest, forget about the others. They choose to let them continue even though they are terrible for what they have done to you. Even if they come to understand their error, they're still not worthy of your time or effort anymore. Like you, my concerns are primarily with your father. Send him a message letting him know how much you value him and that he is more than welcome to participate in your child's life if you are not blocked. When he's ready, wait for him to answer. This brings us to the update. I want to start by saying thank you everyone for continuing to contact me and inquire about my well-being and any updates. I'm sorry if you were hoping for a more positive news, but I'm afraid things have become much worse over the past several weeks. I've made every effort to keep this update brief. If you have any questions, I will do my best to respond. One of my cousins, a 22-year-old woman, took my side or rather she shouldn't break up with me, as I indicated in my initial article. After doing some research, she learned that there was a rumor that my younger sister wasn't actually my dad's biological daughter. My mother informed my siblings that I was the one who started this rumor in order to damage her reputation, which is why they stopped communicating. My partner was surprised to hear this and informed me that he had been getting anonymous texts and emails from someone saying I had cheated on him and that our child wasn't really mine. Because of how furious I was, my significant other didn't want me to know about this earlier. In a last-ditch effort, I drafted a lengthy email to my dad, brothers, and myself, asking my cousin to forward it to them just to make sure they received it. The only reaction he received was an email from my significant other's fiancé, my oldest brother's fiancé, telling him we weren't invited to their April wedding. One week ago was that. Dad gave my significant other a call yesterday. He said that in order to cover up his own unfaithfulness, he felt compelled to tell him the truth about me that I have been lying to everyone and that I made up the whole mother having an affair story. Additionally, he suggested that my partner get a paternity test done to confirm that our child is his. Because my significant other had put him on speaker, I could hear everything. I apologize for my poor quality and mediocre update. Since yesterday, I haven't been sobbing uncontrollably and hurriedly going to the bathroom every time my father says something. I'm not sure if I should have looked into it more or not. For the first time in more than six months, I've come to the realization that I won't be hearing from any of my family members anytime soon, and I wonder if that's really for the best. I find it incomprehensible that her affair is being completely ignored since there was another witness present in addition to you. My only recommendation is to break off all communication with your family, and if at all possible relocate to a different town, city, or nation. Seek assistance as soon as possible and look after your spouse, child, and yourself. The younger sister was persuaded to believe that what she had witnessed was not what had actually occurred by the mother who is also clearly spreading all those rumors. When the human mind is traumatized, strange things happen to it. Extra shock. I wouldn't be shocked if the mother also turned the entire situation around. Little sister and I discovered that OP had an affair in our bedroom with that person, and now she's attempting to blame me for it in order to hide it. She's probably the one who texted OP's partner with those messages as well. 
such a wife as I had. Pure crazy, that is. If I caught her in the act, she would attempt to persuade me that it was she who discovered me. For a while I believed I was schizophrenia. When we were all teenagers my mum started a rumor that my oldest brother was having an affair with our cousin. It wasn't until a carter attempted to disseminate a similar rumor about my kid and his cousin 20 years later that I discovered she was the source of the rumor. The parents of some people are true monsters. Your child is small, your daughter might experience some challenging circumstances in the future. As an example of how to handle this, you will be. Really, don't surround yourself with liars and cheaters. It simply causes you to sink. Be in the company of wonderful individuals who genuinely care about you and no one else. Thank goodness the trash cleared itself. Who knows what other nonsense they'll try to pull later on. How could you make up this narrative since the sister was there and saw it too? It doesn't make logic. Yes, Dad is saying that right now. I don't know if he really thinks that, or if he's just trying to undermine me so that my husband won't trust me. My husband told me not to go look into it any further, and to just leave my family go since he doesn't want to be involved with them anymore. Your spouse is correct. Give them up. Let them maintain their denial. You informed them of the situation, and it is up to them how they responded. Cut them off for the time being at least as they are now attempting to split up your small family in revenge. The following tale is headed update. I delivered a low blow to my boyfriend. At 20, during a disagreement, and I have no idea how to resolve it. Female 22. Original story. I believe that it may have destroyed our wonderful relationship. After a year of dating, things are going well. Although he does a good job of managing everything, my partner occasionally needs reminders for things he neglected to take, like as the spark I gave him when he was at my apartment. My friend was a disaster. She and her boyfriend had recently broken up when I was visiting her house. It was extremely taxing, but all I was doing was trying to help her relax. I had advised her to end the relationship since it was unhealthy. She became angry with me and began to accuse me of causing the breakdown. It caused me great pain. I promised him I would be over in 30 minutes when he texted me when I was already in a foul mood. It took me approximately 1.5 hours to return. He seemed a little agitated to me. I had requested that he bring something from his apartment that he had forgotten. I lost my temper since he had also forgotten it. I declared that I was dating a complete moron and that my buddies were right. He was quite hurt, therefore that was a pretty hurtful thing to say, it really hurt him. He was somewhat dejected, but I instantly apologized. I just offended something that makes him feel uneasy about his intelligence. He claims it's okay and I've attempted to apologize, but it's clear that it still hurts him. I hurt him by acting like a child. Despite the fact that it takes him two hours to get to work from my apartment, he is so wonderful that he brought the items over the following morning. I wish to make this right. I have no idea how to resolve this. Before you read the update, let me give you some very important advice. I would never speak to my pals again if they labeled my partner an idiot. I'm not even sure I could say that to her. I would lose a lot of trust in you and have anxiety and insecurity whenever you went out with your pals if that was him. You should let this man find someone who loves him despite his unaccountable defects if you can't defend him in front of your friends and even echo what they say to him. Correct? Twenty years later, I still remember the time my dad turned around and gave the random person who had dubbed my mum a witch for inadvertently bumping into him at Disney World when I was six years old. I can't fathom ever being less than anything if someone, especially a friend, said something terrible about someone I love. Damn girl, what a horrible way to treat your man. Not only did you offend him, but you also made it clear that you and your pals have negative opinions of him. If he moves on and gives you the chance to make things right, you'll be lucky. If not, you should at least stop acting so horrible and stop your pals from bringing it up. You are unworthy of the opportunity. And all of a sudden, he finds out that you and your buddies believe he's a fool and have talked about his intelligence behind his back. It's pretty difficult to recover from that, to be honest. You and your friend's compliments will probably never be trusted by him again. Rather than just apologizing, you ought to have a candid conversation about what caused you to say what you did. If he realizes the situation and can admit it was a slip of the tongue, he might be open to continuing. I may not be an expert. The irony is that Sparky is involved, and fixing this is simple. First step, return him to his place.
keeping half of it. Step two, give the poor man some space. He deserves better from you than this toxic waste that you are. Notice how you attempt to place the responsibility on him and defend your terrible actions even in this message. You acknowledge complaining to your buddies about him. You are a person of rubbish. Move on and give the man a chance at a better life with a better companion. The latest news is that we broke up. I made an effort to sort things out, but it was obvious that there was no longer any trust, so we broke up. Though I didn't deserve him, I still miss him. I inflicted severe pain on him. I told him I loved him, but he didn't believe me and stated he could never trust me. The most bizarre thing about my labeling him an idiot is that I don't even think he's a fool. I didn't criticize him and I stood up for him whenever my friend tried to make fun of him. I feel that hurting someone is worse than being honest. I was like, to hurt him. It was an extremely harsh act. The URL to a page concerning verbal abuse was posted by someone. I had never encountered a relationship where the partners didn't yell, so at first I felt it was nonsense. Since my parents used to fight and throw things at one other, I believed that calling them names and shouting at them would be healthier than that. I'm disorganized. I've begun therapy, and I will require a significant amount of time to address my destructive inclinations. Most of the time I'm a kind person, but when I'm under a lot of stress or annoyance, I can be violent and injure the people I care about. That is not who I want to be anymore. Since my friends are equally as dysfunctional as I am, I've also distanced myself from them. My instinct was to overdraw and choose the ugliest, meanest thing possible so that I might harm. Him, I'm not sure if I can make that different. What will I do, I wonder, if I can't change? I think I'm just like mum and dad, but I don't want to be like them. I need to get a lot of stuff done. I simply wish I had known how broken I was before I had harmed the most wonderful person in my life. Well done for accepting responsibility for your acts. This is a prime illustration of the normalization and repetition of poisonous and destructive behaviors. Unpacking things and recalibrating what constitutes normal, healthy behavior in a partnership will require a great deal of work. You can succeed if you persist. I'm afraid. I'm not sure if I can alter. I'll give it my all. But if I'm not able to help myself, I'm not sure what I'll do. My soon-to-be ex-girlfriend does the same thing, so I wish she knew this. Fantastic when things are going smoothly. But as soon as she becomes anxious, her words damage me. That was also how my ex was, seems typical. I just want you to know that you don't have to be the person you will be when you're 32 years old. Through therapy, you are more than capable of developing your emotional intelligence, empathy, and self-control. You can improve your communication skills. It is possible to acquire healthy emotional identification and expression skills, which eventually become your new way of seeing the world. I've lived everything, down to the unhealthy temper and unsatisfactory relationship role models, so I know it's doable. When I was 22, I wasn't emotionally stable. Now that I'm 32, my therapist often tells me how well I handle problems and communicate. You are who you are and you may change. You are not your parents.